Okay, welcome back. Uh, and, uh, you know, 20 minutes to go for the pre-open session, as we've been saying. Uh, I don't think we need to say it, but uh, it's going to be a big day. New highs, of course, 800 plus points on the GIF Nifty. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, we're, st we're starting at record uh, highs. Now, what to do after that is the question, right? So why not ask Samir Arora, founder and fund manager at Helios Capital. He's joining us right now on the program. Samir, good to have you with us here. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, looking dapper. Uh, I, you know, you, you were uh, on the on the on the polit political yatra, Samir, and we spoke about that the last time you were on, right? And uh, you were kind of giving us a sense that at least, I mean, there is enough, there's ample confidence from uh, with people that you met, etc. And I don't know these kind of numbers. This is historic, Samir, right? I mean, third yeah. term with these numbers is incredible. But you know, you heard it from me first, which is that actually <laughs> beyond a point, who cares whether it's three forty or. <laughs> As long as it is more than 272. Let's say that last night, the number had come for BJP at 290. How much do you think the market would have been up today? Maybe 2%. Yeah. So now it's, say, 3.5%. So that is mm -hmm. worth 1%. From tomorrow, that would not matter. Of course, assuming that these numbers are similar to the final numbers. So <clears> the <throat> bet was whether they are coming back or not with on their own majority and maybe 10 extra seats. And that was the enough of a bet to be as bullish as you can be. So therefore, this is clearly the fault of the FIs and all to start getting nervous one day before, two days before, as if they found something. I tweeted on this that it was the market which people were seeing and then concluding that there is something wrong. And then, you know, sort of that spiral was going on that, oh, there is something wrong. And then therefore, the market was weak. Although at the end of the day, last month also, the market was not down. It was like zero-ish. So it's okay. So, 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 uh, Samir, so you, you get this exuberant kind of a start, right? Uh, then tomorrow you got actual results. And let's say the actual results are similar or even better, slightly better. So, oh, no, I'm saying uh, don't think like that. Think that if they are worse, but you are still at 300, let's say. You can't be 270. Right. I think right. it won't matter beyond maybe plus minus half a percent. Because okay. the market's main interest was that the same management is there, that sort of the same policies are there, the same trust is there. Most of the ministers are the same, the railway minister, this minister, the oil and gas minister. So beyond a point, this over-analyzing stock market return with the exact number of seats yeah. Is, uh, no, no, I completely, I, I, I completely take. I, I was not actually coming to how much more if that number moves to 400. That was not my question. My question was what to, what to do, uh, what should one do now? Which are the uh, two, two points? One is, does the base of the market move higher? And then, you know, as you were saying, from here now to yeah. the budget, uh, you know, you can't make a, be a bearish argument in that sense, right? Yeah, and what do you, yeah. how are you bearish, so I, right? Why I are you bearish? So that is one. Yeah, does yeah. the base move higher? And then what should, what should one do? What uh, is what has done well, continue to do well? PSUs, defense, manufacturing, railway, power. Is that the list to focus on? Go on. So that, first of all, the base definitely goes <laughs> higher. And the reason for that is that the FII also has less reasons to be negative. And this year, they have sold about two and a half, three billion dollars year to date, which I think at the end of the year will be positive. But more than that, if they were using this, see, the thing is, at the end of the day, everybody knows what is happening. It is that the investor is basically worried about his sunk cost. He has too much money invested in China. He has ignored India in the past. Now you have to prove to him beyond a point. One university endowment guys came to us and said, okay, you know, I need to write a note for the board and one of the points was can you send some evidence to show that the that the elections are fair this not now this <laughs> you were asked about 20 days ago that you know i need this bullet point can you give me some material so absolute nonsensical stuff i hope he's not listening but the point is that these issues will come down and in general india was doing well without this also the market was up if i look at it uh, NSE 500 is up some 8 odd percent already this year. So not bad in itself. So the base definitely goes higher. In terms of immediate, which means today, tomorrow, obviously the same stocks do well again. And thank God I have to make some of these now, these PSUs. But I think beyond that, my favorite sector comes back, which is the financial sector. Because if FII is coming, what is easier for them to buy? A, financials are related to the economy. They are not like IT or pharma or consumer even a little bit, which is more you know, on their own kind of thing and not dependent on government policies and reforms and those kind of things. 
So these are domestic, cyclical, economically sensitive, all that also includes financials. And it is easier for them to justify it because you can clearly show that last two years they've underperformed, at least as in aggregate. So I think the financial will be for the next step. Today, tomorrow, it will be the same old PSUs and the manufacturing. But beyond a point, buying some of these manufacturing type companies at 70 multiple and 80 multiple because they got four orders is also going to not work out in the long run. Today and tomorrow, they are the biggest movers, I guess. Absolutely. So I guess there's consensus there. I mean, uh, Samir, we've been speaking to people. I mean, we had a working Sunday, by the way, as well. Just sharing. Even and we there's had, consensus. Worry, we also had. Oh, okay. Also then had. it's fine. Otherwise, okay, I then... would not have come on this call today morning with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, glad. It's for the greater good, right? We're uh, we're looking at the market, looking at what lies ahead. So for the greater good, it's a working weekend is fine this this time. Uh, so, you know, I just want to, before we talk more about sectors and what will do well, I just want to go back to the FPI issue for a second because that's the big elephant in the room, right? When will these FPIs emerge? And the they reason that emerge. question is, sorry? That is too easy. They will emerge from today onwards. Don't worry about them. Oh, they, okay, okay. So, so they, if, if you're saying they will emerge because they've been on the sidelines and we had Bala, I mean, of Aditya Birla, Sun Life Mutual Fund, he was really thumping the table and saying, guys, we will be the biggest beneficiaries of uh, the move in the next two days because the domestic guys, they're in, right? The foreign guys have been on the, on the sidelines. Now, what could be the extent of it? I know these things are hard to guess, but uh, it, was this the only reason, uh, the lack of clarity on political continuity, was this the only reasons that FPIs have been absent for the last six months? What happens? I mean, can you sort of help us uh, so, you know, gauge I, the magnitude? I, I... I saved one slide here from a Goldman presentation, which is like, I can just read out. So if you see last four or five years, actually disproportionate money has been put into India when they are putting money into emerging markets and least amount has been taken out when they're taking out. So I can, I'm just reading exact numbers. So in 2020, they took out 33 billion from Asia and they put in 23 billion in India, which means ex India, they took out $53 billion. Okay, or $56 billion, because the net was still 33 negative. Then in 2021, they pulled out $34 billion from emerging markets, but from Asian emerging markets, and in India, they put 3.8. So again, in a market where ex-India, they were taking out $36 billion, they put in $3 billion to India. And then in 22, it was more or less in line because of high interest rates, where the market, they took out $60 billion overall, of which... 17 were from India, I'm just reading out direct numbers. And then 23, they put in total 31 billion out of it, 21 was in India. So point is, nobody's giving up on India, don't worry. They can fine tune it a little bit because somebody's averaging his China position. Somebody's embarrassed about putting in India now if he did not have it before. In 24, it's a bit negative in a sense, relatively where they put in overall 12 billion. But from India, they have taken now 2.9. This is as of this report is dated to three days ago. And this is all because they put 14 billion in Korea. Big picture being in the last 24 years, in 20 years, they've been positive on India and they put in on average 20, 25 billion in good years and 5, 10 billion in bad years, unless it's a negative year. So they will come in plus minus a few weeks only from today. At the end of the year, this year, I don't think there would be a negative influence on the market. But they are somewhat idiots and I am also an FII and I want to benchmark against them. So I am I am happy if they if they underperform me by not being bullish on India so far. Okay, okay. Uh, we, we take that on board. So they are going to come for sure. So for now sure. uh, let's uh, now let's talk about then the sectors. And you said financials obviously and that becomes a no-brainer anyway, you know, largest part of the index still. Uh, now, on the manufacturing and capex piece, where you said valuations are tough and buying is a challenge, I mean, how do you navigate that? Because if there's so, continuity, so, same policies, what do you do with these stocks? So, you know, recently these manufacturing in the funds came and all these defense funds come up every day and we look at them to see what are these guys going to buy because they suddenly raise 5,000 crores and 8,000 crores or whatever they do raise. And then I saw that in the manufacturing index, oh, really, I have all these manufacturing stocks or I know about these stocks. These are not some new animals. They consider all the auto sector stocks as manufacturing. They consider many of the pharma stocks as manufacturing. They consider even HPDP, which I call it oil and gas as manufacturing. So if you literally look at it, other than one or two of these uh, uh, you know, PLI type stocks, it's the same old stocks. They are just repackaged to you as manufacturing stocks. 
uh, it's the same old stock which I've always had on my life. I just don't call them manufacturing, but I call them by their sector names. You please see the index of manufacturing uh, sector and you'll find, oh, everybody has these stocks for long. So maybe some of these become very visible symbols in a bull market for manufacturing and that you may have or not have. It is most probably not going to change your life. Because others you anyway right. have. Hi, Samir. Because Good morning. Good to see you. Anyway have. So the question is, right. should I buy one Dixon? Should I buy one this? You have it. You don't have it. You have some 3% here or there. What I mean is, everybody already has manufacturing. It's just that they didn't realize that this was the label being given to these stocks. All right. Hi, Samir. Good morning and good to hear your thoughts. Just want to squeeze in one quick question. Zomato is a stock that you all uh, you know, have been pretty bullish on. We had a note coming in on Friday, I think, sir, that was talking about uh, competition intensifying out there. Your view on it, uh, is the pie big enough or do you think uh, th that is a genuine risk? We love competition. We, uh, competition expands the market and brings in new consumers. This is the line everybody likes to say. I'm also saying, uh, who cares? This is every day. Every day something happens even in our mutual fund business. A lot of competition is coming in. All day. That's part of life. The point is that Somebody who's done well in one minute, you can't threaten him with new competition. You show it for three years, then we'll worry about it or two years or at least start just by saying it is okay. It's, it's part of life. If for next one or two, three years, these guys will grow very well. They have executed well. And then somebody else can also come in. It's okay because what is the target? Please understand the target is the Kirana guy who is your competition because you can get from him quickly yourself or the Kirana fellow can send you his uh, delivery boy or deliver it to you. That is the competition. Now you tell me how can this competition last? The Kirana guys, <laughs> poor guys have to lose a large part. A, they are not open for 20 hours. These guys are open, let's say for 20 hours in a day or maybe even 24. Secondly, these guys buy in bulk. Third is these guys can also put in their private labels. They, right. are, they don't need to be on the prime land. They can be on the fourth floor in a dark store. They have technology. If you ask for something, not only them, or even the new guy who can come in. But the point is the market is uh, Kirana to this up to a point. And that right. is still far away. So don't be so precise about it. It's okay. It's really a good stock. Doesn't have to be that big an outperformer as it has been in the past. Right, right. Uh, no, got it. Uh, Samir, just one uh, last point. Uh, you know, there will be, when Friday, if we talk again on Friday, or we look at the market on Friday, there'll be stocks which are up 20, 25, 30%. There will be. That is, there right, there will be. So tell us one. <laughs> I hope some of them I own. <laughs> tell us. Tell us. Uh, there will be one of these. You know, 20, I don't know. But 10%, 5, 6, many of them will be up today. That's what I'm saying. Why do you think I've come here enjoying even though the market is about to open and I have... Okay, Samir. Yeah. Samir, Samir, let me turn the question then. Some you may already have in the portfolio, so you'll celebrate. How much are you pumping in today? 50, 100, so 150, 200? How much are you buying today? So we are a long short fund. I bought even on Friday. My net is now some 72. But the problem is I got new money on Friday because it was the last day of the month. So my net has come down and I have to do something. So maybe I'll buy 5, 6% of either short covering or new stocks, that depends on when you let me yeah. go. But broadly, we have <laughs> identified that up to what point we are willing to buy some stocks. Otherwise, we'll just cover a few more shots. No, no, we'll, we'll let you go back to your trading desk. <laughs> it's an important day, Samir. Great conversation and, as uh, always. <laughs> and and, and uh, Samir, we will continue this conversation tomorrow when the results <laughs> yeah. come. That's around uh, 11, 30, 12 or so. So, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much okay, for joining us uh, this important day. Appreciate it. We'll take a quick...